I will tell you what are the myths which have to be demolished in medicine. Because Karl Popper, a great thinker, who was the professor of science philosophy in the London School of Economics in the 50s, had one principle. Knowledge, he said, I am quoting him, knowledge advances not by repeating known things, but by refuting false dogmas, of which there are many in medicine. One is, you must have run a, my, what is that called, marathon. A lot of people run a marathon. Let me assure you that running a marathon is a bad exercise, it's bad for health, and it's a, one of the disease producers. And running a marathon is one of the ways of detecting falsely some people whom we can make a money out of. That's, that's an industry. So running a marathon is a bad thing. Two, you must eat ten times a day or four times a day or eight times a day or one time a day. All these are myths. We still don't know how many times you have to eat. There are people who are very healthy eating only once a day. I have seen a lot of Jain sannyasis who do just take a little food and they are happy. I have seen people who gorge food ten times a day and still doing well. So it all depends on your body constitution and different people are different. No two individuals are alike in this world. So most of our medical studies in science, what are called medical science, are false because we compare individuals. You can't compare two individuals because two individuals are not the same. They cannot be the same and they cannot do the same thing. But what we do is we take them as RCT, randomized control trials. And recently it was found that these RCTs on which most of medical science is based are a fake. So you can understand how we base our scientific data on wrong data, wrong scientific methods. And today science is not free. Science actually is so clustered and cloistered and imprisoned. Science is a prisoner of money because money grant comes and one who gets more grant is a bigger scientist. Yesterday I was traveling, I was uh, having a couple of my colleagues in the university in the olden days before I retired and they, they, one of them is still continuing to be a, called a scientist. He has not produced nothing but he has produced so many papers and got so much of grant. The university likes him because he gets two to three crores of rupees every year for the university. So they say he is the best scientist. And this is what science is all about. And if you want to know what science is and where science is, where science is going, please read this book, Science Set Free. The book's name is Science Set Free, written by a great scientist called Sheldrake. And Sheldrake, Robert Sheldrake, is a great scientist in Cambridge University. And Bob has written this book because he showed how science is all now being imprisoned by money and greed and publication and uh, grants. You, get, you take grant from people and then you can't give a negative report because the grant, next grant won't come. For example, one of the calamities that most of you have felt, yesterday I felt it in the India International Center when I came, when I asked for an omelette. He said, white egg omelette? I said, no, egg omelette, whole egg omelette. Even the yellow? I said, yes, of course, yellow is a part of the egg. And if you don't have the egg, it's not egg. White of an egg is not egg, egg is egg. Now they are worried about because the yellow contains fat, I believe. And some people don't even look at fat, forget about eating fat. They don't even look at fat, they just shun fat. Actually, fat is very good for health. Fat is good for the heart. And fat is, must be eaten, but in moderation. You, you don't gorge on fat. But fat is not bad. Who, whoever has told fat is bad, I have based that on a wrong study. And this, I'll tell you the study. There's a man called Ansel Case. Ansel Case was a biochemist. His wife was a physiologist. So two of them together got a grant, nearly 50 or odd thousand dollars from the government to study the effect of fat on heart. So they went on a honeymoon tour of about 22 countries, collecting data about fat and heart disease. They collected and collected and then came home. When they plotted it on the graph, they found there's no correlation between the two at all, the amount of fat you eat and heart disease. They can't give that data to the government because $56,000 will have to be returned or they'll not get the next grant. So what they did was they sat at night and removed country by country by country. From the 22 countries, they reduced it to seven countries where there was some sort of a correlation. So they called it the famous Ansel K seven country study. And to you, today what you read in the textbooks or in the, in the newspaper is seven country study, which says, Fat is the cause of heart disease, fat is the cause of atherosclerosis, which comes down, etc., etc. It's all myth, but it still gets perpetuated because that was done because Ansel Case had to keep his grant going. 
and get the next grant coming. If you go through most of the studies in medicine, they are based on this kind of a data. So don't believe most of what is said. And very interesting thing is, you know when you get, when, when something is not good, your body tells you it's not good. Supposing you over it, let us say, you eat more, then you feel uneasy. Have you ever felt that? You don't feel easy. When if you eat little less than what you think you can, then you are comfortable. Supposing you think you can eat four chapatis and eat, end up with only eating two chapatis, you are very comfortable that day. If you think you can eat four chapatis and by mistake the chapati is so good that you eat, that's very nice of you. So very good man. I just wanted some hot water. So he has thought about it, not forgotten it. And no, it's all right, don't worry, don't worry. And he has brought it. Good man. Your blood pressure will come down. So, <clears throat> eating in moderation is a very good thing, healthy thing, <clears throat> and your own body tells you it's good. Actually, if you eat very early in the evening, and then take about three hours before you go to bed, you will get very good sleep and you feel comfortable. Supposing you eat, gorge a lot <clears throat> of food, let us say there's a conference, and it ends at 10 o'clock, it usually goes runs behind time, most conferences do, and then you go and eat, there's a lot of food because it's uh, Taj Vivanta and the food is good and the chicken is very nice. So eat a lot, then go home, you feel discomfort, then you lie down, you don't get sleep. And even if you do get sleep, it's not a comfortable sleep. Whereas you eat very early, like the Jains, before the sun sets and then sleep at after 10 o'clock, you get sound sleep without any problem whatsoever. So. Your own body tells you what is good and what is bad, instead of the doctor telling you what is good and what is bad. Now don't overeat, number one. Number two, do not eat when you are not hungry. In nature, no animal eats when it is not hungry, except man. Because you are told in school, you must have a breakfast at 8 o'clock, and uh, lunch at uh, 1 o'clock, and evening tea at 4 o'clock, otherwise uh, tea, tea break is all broken. Then you have a evening dinner. No. You feel hungry, eat, whatever time it is. And whatever meal you want to call it, call it, doesn't matter. But eat. But don't eat when you're not hungry. And after you eat, don't, don't gorge very fast. Now, I like that man saying, two minutes for breakfast is bad, because even if you wake two minutes, you eat a lot of breakfast, your brain doesn't get the message, because it takes about 45 minutes for the message to go from the stomach to the brain, saying that, well, I am full now. I don't want any more food. So if you eat gradually, slowly, yes sir? If you eat gradually and slowly, your stomach will tell your, uh, your brain, now look, this is enough, we don't want any more. Or the stomach will tell, we want more, and it's not enough. So you do it slowly, take your own time, and then eat in comfort. Now what you eat is not important. This is very important. What you eat is least important. You can eat anything you like. A lot of people are there, you sit and say, does it contain cholesterol? Does it contain fat? Does it, is it oil? Is it oily? Is it oil filled? Is it deep fried? Why are you worried? Irrespective of what it is, do you like it? Eat it. But don't overeat it. And eat it less than what you think you should eat. And that's the principle for food. And I'm not going to tell you what diet to take. Now, if I were to tell you something, I would be happy if you are a vegetarian. Because we are physiologically vegetarians. Look at our teeth. Look at our gut, which is about 29 feet. A meat eating animal. Like a, even a ferocious lion, okay, about 8 feet back. So whatever it eats now, we'll go out in 4 hours time. Whatever you, you, you eat today, it'll go out either tomorrow or day after tomorrow. So it will remain inside. And second thing is, a meat eating animals do not eat cooked meat. Only man eats cooked meat. Cooked meat is poison. When meat is cooked, the chemicals change and the, the amino acids fuse. And cooked meat is not a diet at all. I don't know who, why we eat cooked meat at all. A lot of people think if you don't eat meat, you don't get protein. I tell them, you come and see our elephants in the temples. They don't eat meat at all. They eat only leaves. And if you can fight an elephant and win, then I think meat eating is better. And very interestingly, when you eat, 
vegetables you feel very comfortable you are not very ferocious also when you eat meat you are very ferocious you want to feel like feel like fighting with someone but the vegetarian food will give you the sattvic diet will give you tranquility of mind which is a very important part now then what about exercise a lot of people think early morning you must get up put on a trouser and run jog they say Amen. jogging is very very bad for health jogging is very very bad did i say that shall i repeat that you should not jog because jogging will destroy your ankle joint jogging will destroy your knee joint and jogging will is not good for the heart also but walking is good man is meant to walk and we are four uh, two legged animals so we should only walk four legged animals like dogs can run when you are four legged you have your center of gravity inside your base when you have two legs when you walk, run your center of gravity falls out each time and that's balanced by your knee so if you are a mild runner at the end of the day you will probably have when you grow a little older your knee joints are so bad that you can't walk and we see lot of these women who put on lot of weight they can't walk because their knee joints are very very bad so you must try to sort of walk every day walking is very good next is cycling is good the third is swimming is good but you don't try to swim start learning swimming at the age of 40 if you know swimming and if you are good at swimming swimming is a very good exercise if you are not good at swimming don't try to learn swimming at the age of 40 because you will drown in the water then the next best thing is exercise what time of the day preferably on empty stomach when you don't have too much of food but do not exercise on full stomach at all because it will load the, the heart very heavily that's why a full meal is called a hearty meal have you heard of that it's a hearty meal why do they call it as a hearty meal the one part of the body which a food when you over it and touches is the heart each time you eat a big meal the heart has supplied so much of blood to the gut that the heart overworks so having a big meal is like running a mile is almost as much as that and then if you over exert on that like for example there are a lot of people who say i'll walk after meal no never do that walk before a meal and then eat after meal you just uh, after walk you just sit for a little while relax and then have a meal so don't eat it first first now third thing is what about your uh, relaxation what is relaxation whatever is good for you it's good relaxation somebody said do you enjoy music yes i do but i i don't die for music so if you love music go ahead music will give you relaxation if you love playing cards go ahead it will give you relaxation if you love talking to people go ahead do it that but very interesting thing happened recently they did a study like the study in ayurveda for the, what's called observational research thousands of years you observe a group of people unlike what we do in medicine called cross sectional research we take about 100 people study them two groups and then come to conclusions immediately so one day you say coffee is good next day you say coffee is bad third day this scientific study says tea is good and the fourth day study says tea is very bad for health so all these are because the study is wrong now this is a very interesting study that's going on and it's almost complete now this is called the harvard alumni study those who joined the harvard university in 1930s and who are still alive many of them have died 90 years they have died so if they are alive they are being followed up if they are dead also they are being followed up to find out how they died three important things came out in this study mark my words now remember this very clearly three things came out a drinking alcohol is very bad for health drinking alcohol is very bad for health i am repeating it second time because lot of doctors tell you uh, drink a little couple of packs of uh, wine red wine it is good for your heart absolute myth there is nothing even a drop of alcohol is not good for health i am not saying a drop of alcohol is bad for health but there is no evidence to say that even a drop of alcohol is good for health alcohol is not good for health at all alcohol damages the liver of course first alcohol damages the heart irreparably there is what is called alcoholic cardiomyopathy which is a very dangerous disease man drops down dead and but that cannot be corrected at all there is no treatment for that and then alcohol is bad two tobacco is an enemy number one three having friends relations and happiness and the more number of friends and relations you are happy with longer you live healthier you live happier you live so only three things a 
don't drink alcohol b don't smoke three have lot of friends talk to them daily make them happy make another person happy you will be happy how to be happy christian an american poet has said if love is what you give away love is what comes back each day like a mirror so if happiness is what you give away happiness is what comes back each day supposing i give a lot of happiness to shah saab uh, happiness will come to me from someone else shah saab will be happy because of me but i will be happy because of someone else 